if you really think about it, for, for in the grand scheme of things, you went from grassroots racing to the top level in what about seven years, right? Because, yeah. like you said, you weren't in the modifieds long. You weren't in the Bush Series long. No. How did all of that happen? What were the what were the, the what was the timeline? Again, I was blessed uh, that I was in good race cars that I could display my talents, mm-hmm. and I've won important races. You know. Timing is everything. Well, timing was everything in my career, you know, from uh, my first shot in a modified, uh, second race in a modified at Martinsville, big race, finished ninth. Uh, second time I ever drove one, and it was a car that I hand built. Uh, wow. Me and Wayne Miller. And so, and then to to what happened to how I got into the the Bush Series was a race gets rained out. Brother Jeff can't go back to Martinsville to run the Bush car. He convinces uh, Mr. Henrik, Rick Henrik, and, and Robert G. Uh, to let me drive the car and go up there and win the race. Robert G., another big name, too. Yeah. 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 Go, go there and win the race. I mean, just very fortunate, but you still had to produce. And that was your first time in a, in a Grand National car ever? No, that was my second time. Okay. But first time in that car, obviously. But so this the second time you, you run in what back then was the Bush series against all the greats, you know, as we mentioned, and beat them. I mean, come on, a guy from New York State's not supposed to be able to do that. You know, it just isn't going to happen. So at this point, when you won that race, you were like, this is it, I've made it. Well, no, because I, you know, I knew the sport and and one one isn't going to get you there, but it certainly opened a lot of eyes and I, I knew it did. And it opened Rick Hendrick's eyes because he later made a deal with Levi Garrett, who was the sponsor of that car, to run me in 12 more races that year. That's really what got me in the in the limelight of the Bush Grand National owners, and that's what got me into that beautiful car right behind me, uh, the <laughs> Thomas Brothers car, by running 12 races for Rick Hendrick. In, com- in competing against the cup guys when the cup guys were in the in the races like at Darlington at Charlotte Dover Rockingham being being the only guy or one of the only guys that could run against the cup guys that's what got me my my shot so uh, you got to tell me the story when we talked the other night about the, the working in the shop getting the call for the ride and then you got a call from Mr. Hendrick after you won you got to take us through that whole story yeah so you know i was i was working uh, i had just had a very successful season in in new england in the sherry cup car the 12 and i knew i needed to live in the south if i was going to make it in this sport i needed to live in the south so i applied for a job at at Hendrick Motorsports and he, uh, Harry Hyde was the crew chief he hired me as a fabricator i worked all winter through the 84 to 85 uh, springtime. Learning under Harry Hyde. Working for Harry Hyde That's in the fab shop, building race cars for Brother Jeff, uh, who was driving the cup car that time, the Levi Garrett car. And, um, you know, making a living. And I, But I didn't have any solid plans to race down here. Uh, Billy Carrazzo and Clyde McLeod of the, the Sherry Cup team, we made a deal to stay together for just the big modified races. Uh, but there was no way I could run a weekly show living in North Carolina. So, uh, yeah, so race got rained out at Martinsville. The The Bush race got rained out and and uh, went back up there as a substitute driver. The kid out of the fab shop goes to Martinsville and wins the race, you know. So that was that was huge. And then, you know, back then you had to stay in the waiting the payoff line they paid you that day you, right. the, you got you, cash you got right. yeah you got money okay. you know? and, <laughs> and and uh so i had to wait in the line to get paid and i uh monday morning i told mr hyde harry hyde that i had to take the money down to mr hendrick went down uh to city chevrolet where his office was at that time and uh walked in there and gave him the check and he says well what are we going to do with this you know because we didn't discuss the purse or paying me or anything it was just a last minute I just You're go, happy to have the just opportunity. Just go up there and race, you know. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, we're gonna, I'm going to treat you just like your brother Jeff and Tim. And I said, look, you don't owe me a dime. I mean, it was an honor to drive that car, and thank you for the opportunity. And, no, we're going to pay you just like Jeff and Jeff and Tim, and uh, you're going to get 50%. Well, I walked out of there. 
I knew I was rich, man. <laughs> six was, grand in your pocket? Six grand in my pocket? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that this, was great. This racing thing's not bad, <laughs> it's right? It's not a bad gig, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> so and as I said, later that day, Mr. Hendrick uh, came to the shop. It, it was clo- We were wrapping things up for the day, and he uh, informed me that I was going to go to work full-time over at the Bush shop and that Levi Garrett have, have agreed to sponsor me for 12 more races, and that was a dream come true. The, and, and you... It was 12 races, technically in today's view, a limited schedule, mm-hmm. and you still made it work. You won what, like four or five races? We won, year, right? Yeah, we won three, had eight poles. I mean, we we only finished out of the top 10 once uh, because the car broke, but that was, we were a lap ahead at IRP, had a lap on the field and the engine broke, but uh, a lap on Darrell Walter, who was running second. Now, were these other guys bitching, going, oh, he's only getting this ride because he's Jeff's brother? Oh, yeah, of course. You know, and, and I'd have to be a fool not to think that people were going to say that all the time. They were always going to compare me to Jeff. You know, I was nowhere near the modified driver Jeff Bonine was. I was nowhere near the Bush Grand National driver Jeff Bonine was, and I was no near, nowhere near the cup driver Jeff Bonine was. But I was Brett Bonine, and that was my career and, and my record and my stats speak for themselves the story of that win at martinsville is is great and really rare nowadays where drivers win in their first or second shots well it how it happened you know as we talked about earlier was extremely rare you know again just a guy working out of the fab shop and gets a call to go drive a substitute for uh, the main driver and wins the race i mean that's unusual but what happened after the race i was floored you know, you, I was driving for Robert G., uh, Robert G., Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s grandfather, and Robert was known for having the most beautiful Bush cars. All, all the cars he ever raced, built for other drivers, uh, were beautiful, and he had some great drivers drive for him. He had Darrell Waltrip and Tim Richmond and Bobby Ellis and Dick Trickle and locally, you know, Brother Jeff and then locally Hayward Plyer and the local heroes around the the charlotte north carolina area those were those orange and white 17s right that's right that's what daryl drove yep and so here i am i pull into victory lane at at martinsville and robert comes over puts the window net down he doesn't say great job you know fantastic race nothing in his his richmond virginia southern accent says i get the effing clock (laughs) He, he didn't care about the money. He, he wanted the clock. And I, as I learned later, Robert was always about the hardware. Oh, okay. He, he, the deal you were supposed to have with him is he gets all the trophies. Really? Oh, yeah, that was the deal. I didn't know it. You know, again, I, I, I barely knew Robert, right? That's it, kind of rare because you hear a lot of drivers giving away their old trophies. You don't hear the I, guys collecting he them. He said, I get the effing clock. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I, you know. Did he preface this? Sen- did he preface the sentence with "boy"? <laughs> yes, <laughs> he did. Yes, <laughs> you know. And so then, you know, so Mr. Hendrick was ecstatic that we won because that was the first race that Levi Garrett had won. Okay, and that was big for sponsorship. And that's yeah. before Jeff won Daytona, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so then Mr. Hendrick he buys me a duplicate clock for my trophy. You know, that's so that cool. was that was really cool. But he and Robert would we'd we'd be at the shop and Robert would say I took Daryl Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jeff Bonine and Dick Trickle to Martinsville, and but who's got to win me a clock that damn Brett Bodine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, he's, he got it right. He got his he got clock. he got his clock. You got your win, uh, which was f- essentially for all intents and purposes your. Uh, your audition really in racing which was something you nailed well in in big time stock car racing Mm -hmm. you know you know won a bunch of races up north and and all that and the modifies but that wasn't going to get me a cup ride you know i knew what i had to do and i had to do it in that bush series 